This is the Gen Y Leaders Podcast. Welcome to the Gen Y Leaders Podcast, where we guide millennials to become the next generation of business leaders and entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Eric Huey, and multiple times a month, we bring you interviews from high-performing millennials who are challenging perceptions and changing expectations of our generation. Our mission is to help you overcome fear, take action, and go confidently in the direction of your dreams. It's time to start preparing now, mainly because 10,000 baby boomers are retiring every day which will create a vacuum of career opportunities that you've been waiting for. Will you be ready? Mr. Harry Campbell, welcome to the Gen Y Leaders Podcast. Thanks. You are one of our first uh, mentors for men- Mentor Month, so it's uh, exciting times. I pre- appreciate you being here. Uh, just to start off, uh, kind of set the stage for, for listeners and viewers, um, just kind of describe who you are and, and what you do. Sure. Um, I'm a businessman, an author, a speaker, and an investor. How about that? All right. That's a, a full variety resume. variety of things. <laughs> um, most recently, I was the CEO at Dury Vision for five years. I um, stopped doing that. I'd like to say retired. My wife would say I'm on sabbatical. Okay. Um, on 1231 of 18. Okay. So I've had a little over a year on my latest uh, uh, foray into the world of not having a steady job, and I'm having a blast. All right. Um, I do, I'm, I'm getting ready to finish my third book, which I put a lot of time into, and I'm on the speaker series to, to do inspirational, motivational speeches around the country. Um, yeah. As you can see here, I've got um, a keynote speech that I'm hired to do on culture, one on leadership, and the third one that's getting ready to be done is on uh, Get Real Mindset. Yeah, and that's what we'll be talking about today is, is mindset, so I look forward to that. So you obviously have a, a full resume and, and, and staying busy even with not the, the typical, you know, nine-to-five job. Yes. Um, what keeps you motivated? I mean, what, these are obviously pretty lofty goals to, to keep writing and keep speaking and, and pushing the limits, so to speak. So what's your, what's your why? What's your, what's your motivation? Um, my sense of purpose or my why is to um, uh, support my wife particularly. She has a brain tumor. Uh, we Very know it's a malignant, that. inoperable brain tumor. Yeah. And um, one of the ways that I, I show her how much I love her and support her is I give uh, 100% of my gross speaking fees to yeah. charity. That's Head for the Cure Foundation, which is actually in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. And um, I also give 100% of the proceeds from the books. So even when I was working, uh, whether it was at Sprint, Embark, or even Dury Vision, mm-hmm. um, what I did was I did these speaking engagements and then gave the gross speaking fees to charity. And um, I, I tell you, I, I like it. Mm-hmm. I'm good at it. But more importantly, my why is that shows my family and my wife specifically how much I love her and that I uh, support her yeah without a doubt I'm very sorry to hear that but it's amazing that you're supporting her in such a broad and bold way thanks you know I think this is my ninth year of uh, doing the speaking Um, she was diagnosed 16 years ago so she's um, uh, quite a long ways into her journey but um, I have now raised, I checked this morning, uh, $425,000. Oh, my goodness. For the Cure That's Foundation. amazing. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe the greatest accomplishment of all, right? Yes. It, yeah. it feels pretty good. Yeah, that's great. So as we've talked about, we've mentioned these two books here, and, and today we're going to be talking about your, your third book, which is on mindset. Uh, so at this point, I'm really going to turn it over to you. There's uh, three points, I believe. It's kind of a, a three-point um, mm-hmm. overview of, of mindset and what you want to pass on to uh, other successful people and people in general. Um, so if you could kind of just maybe highlight those first three points to start off and then kind of dive deep dive on, on each one of those. Glad to. Um, I, I definitely think kind of in, um, uh, I'll call it orderly fashion when I come up with somebody, somebody a subject, someone says, tell me about X. Mm-hmm. That's the way it, it works for me. And it's kind of a three by three matrix. And, and for mindset, it's no different. And I love it. It is less businessy of a book. It's more about life and business. The first two were um, a bit more about business. Mm-hmm. The three main points that I emphasize and I tell stories about and I talk about in the book Mindset are very clear. The first one is be an attractor. Mm. 
Um, people can put all sorts of words around that, but it really means be someone that people want to be around. Yeah. They want to walk down the hall with you if they don't know you. They yeah. want to work with you. They want to give you a meeting. They want to help you. Um, it, the reason why that's so important to me, I believe that many of things in life, uh, decisions in life, are made at the margin. Mm. Most people are not so bad or so good at something that they're going to automatically win or lose. It's going to be played at the margin. Yeah. And I am convinced that attractors have the opportunity to turn what is going to be a very, very close loss, 49 to 51, and flip it into a 51 to 49. And I think it's underappreciated how important that is because the cumulative effect of a bunch of things that you can flip can lead you to success. You're not yeah. going to, if you're if you're an investor or somebody running a business and you're looking for money, mm. you're not going to get money that you're not supposed to get if you're an attractor. But I contend you're going to get more meetings and you're going to get more opportunities and people are going to lean slightly towards you. And so if you're almost going to get it, it's going to tip it over the edge. Yeah. So being an attractor okay. is the first one. What are some things that, that play into being an attractor as far as maybe some, some sub-bullets underneath that? Uh, is it, you know, having high empathy and, and self-awareness, uh, kind of that great charisma to have that gravitational pull? Uh, um, uh, excellent point. Uh, all those, yes, and I'm going to add a couple. Uh, yeah. Vulnerability is one of them. Yeah. I if you're willing to be vulnerable, and that includes everything from saying, I don't know and I'm sorry. Those mm -hmm. are amazingly powerful things that lead uh, uh, directly to positiveness in relationships, I believe. Um, but also, uh, let people see you sweat. If you're nervous or worried about something, talk about it. Yeah. You don't crawl into a fetal position and, and <laughs> let it uh, paralyze you. But yeah. it, if you do that, what it does is shows your humanness. Mm -hmm. And I think from an attractor standpoint, that's important. Um, I will say that don't make the mistake, and I say that it's this in the book, about extroversion versus introversion. Mm. I'm an extrovert. Um, that factor has nothing to do with whether you're an attractor. Okay. Um, if I had to list the, the, the 12 people that I would put as the highest on the attractor list that I've come upon in my 35 years of business, um, I think over half of them were introverts because it really has to do with how they operate, how they treat people, mm -hmm. how they communicate, and how they get things done, and, and their sense of uh, humbleness and humility, and, and that doesn't have anything to do with extrovert and introvert. And I think that's a commonly misunderstood thing when yeah. I talk about that. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I was guilty of even thinking that right when you said that, so I'm, I'm glad, you, glad you touched on that. Thanks. Great overview. So that was number one. Yeah. Being attractive. Being attractive. Number two is embrace the crookedness. I love that statement because <laughs> it makes people flinch a little bit. Right. It doesn't have anything to do with integrity. It has right. to do with the crookedness of life. It, here's what I say. You need a plan. Everybody needs a plan. The plan can be for the day the week, the month, the career, it doesn't matter. You need a plan. But also, I, I joke that uh, about seven minutes into every day, the plan needs to be revised. <laughs> it's Without going to doubt. change. Yeah. Um, you may have uh, a huge meeting and there's a wreck on the interstate and you're stuck and you're going to be late. Mm -hmm. It may be one of your kids um, is sick and now all of a sudden you've got to juggle coverage and stay home or do something like that. Um, plans change all the time. How you react is, my, by definition to me, going to determine whether you're successful or not mm -hmm. and whether you have a get-real mindset. Um, I, I like to say, don't, don't get paralyzed by it. Embrace it. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. Yeah. Expect it. Don't worry about it. Ask yourself. Take pause. Say, okay, what am I going to do next? How am I going to revise this? I'm going to make this work. In fact, this is going to be good because I'm going to do this. Now, once again, as I talked about on the attractor side, uh, introvert, introversion and extroversion. On this one, you have to make sure you're not a Pollyannish optimist. Hmm. That's somebody that uh, they're, they're going down with the ship and they're still standing there saying it's going to be okay. <laughs> no, you still got to help yourself. Yeah. You, you have to be proactive. You have to communicate. You have to uh, sometimes do some self-talk. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is to revise the plan, embrace where you're going, and then set the new path. Yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, whenever you say that point, I always picture the uh, LinkedIn meme or graphic, you know, whatever you want to call it, that says uh, what I thought success was, and it's yeah. like the straight growth arrow, but what success is, and it's just like squirrely lines. Spaghetti. Yeah, going back and forth. So, yeah, I don't think that could be uh, any more true. So I think that that's a huge point. So my third point. So we've, yeah. we've talked about being an attractor, which really has to do with your relationships. Embracing crookedness, which has to do 
with resilience. Mm. The third one is in the area of renewal, and, and what I like to say is uh, live to learn. Yeah. Um, I, I uh, am just curious. I have questions. I see things that uh, are uh, puzzle me, and I want to know why. Um, I am out eating dinner with my family, and I'm trying to figure out the cook to, to server ratios <laughs> and whether they're in uh, whether the restaurant is in a very good location that's easy to get to from all angles or you only have to be going south or whatever. Yeah. I, I, I'm fascinated by those things. Mm -hmm. That translates into business very well too because I'll, I'll be running a business and a TV ad comes on or you see a, a Facebook ad or you see something that's a, a, a podcast and you're like, wait a minute. My competitors are doing something different. I don't know why. Yeah. I'm curious. That's different. We should be in that space, or we should make that claim, or we shouldn't, and maybe we should. I, I love those kind of things. Um, the way I like to describe it is the people that um, I work with, doesn't matter whether it's in a startup or a big company, I want them to have peripheral vision. I want them to be very, very good at what they do and deliver results because that's our job. Yeah. But at the same time, I want them to keep their minds open to the side and think, wow, what just happened? Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. Why? And living to learn is that way. It comes from reading. Mm -hmm. It comes from um, talking to people that don't have your point of view. Yeah. Don't get in the echo chamber is what they call that, which is, I believe this, and I'm only going to talk to people that believe that also. And right. boy, do I think I'm right at that point. Yeah. Because everybody it's says that. Every, now, everybody needs a dose of that nowadays, I feel like. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and living to learn uh, to me also helps keep me young. It keeps me interested. It keeps me excited. Um, when, when I'm doing my speech, uh, occasionally, I'll talk about this uh, subject and I say, if you work at Ford Motor Company, there's a reasonable chance in 10 years that one or two of your key competitors are going to be Google or Apple. Oh, yeah. And just stop and, and think about that mm -hmm. for a second. Yeah, that's uh, and, and how crazy that is because you know we're talking about heavy manufacturing plants with unions mm -hmm. and and the way they they've done business all along. The robot, the robotic age changed that pretty dramatically, but it's still within those same plants. Now all of a sudden you've got these tech firms saying, "Huh, how can yeah. I disrupt that market?" Yeah, that's I've heard that Uber and Lyft kind of have that set foundation to be the next Ford and GM with ride sharing and. Even you see the videos of um, the ride-sharing planes and stuff, the little modules and, and <laughs> drones that take off with people inside. It's like, yeah, it's... Uh, it's you, you know, Eric, it sounds very Jetsons-like and, and <laughs> surreal and not possible, but um, just go back, you know, 20 years. I don't know what the... I don't know how far back you need to go. And I remember my first smartphone. It was a Palm Trio. Yep. And it was amazing because all of a sudden I could get... Uh, my email, my work email, sure. my, my personal email, my <laughs> calendar, and um, eventually the, the internet also, or the web. And that simple change was um, so dramatic with regard to behaviors, businesses, competitors, and the future that it's, it's almost um, hard to underestimate. Oh, yeah. And I feel like it's exponential and kind of compounding too, to where it's just, <coughs> just going to go quicker and quicker and yeah. uh, be more more interesting and, and life changing. Yeah, and, and the acceleration is happening amazingly. So um, I have a son who's 25 and a, a son who's 11, a daughter in between. My 11 year old has grown up in a world that's, um, I would argue, as dramatically different as you could possibly imagine from his brother. Oh, yeah. And so it isn't just generational. Oh, yeah. It, it's kind of um, five and ten year chunks. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. I heard someone say the other day that um, there's a certain age um, break off to where some people feel like they grew up in a hierarchy culture and, some, and younger people are growing up in what they're calling a, a network culture mm -hmm. to where decision makers are just a you know, social media post away or an inbox away. Uh, so I thought that was an interesting concept too, as opposed to the org structure, yeah. direct report, span of control. Exactly. Oh, you know, I, I I get that. I had interviewed in my career, uh, even in the last 15 years, with uh, some uh, West Coast firms, Silicon Valley, and the first time I saw the CEO in a desk, in the middle of the room. Oh yeah. It was a little startling and shocking, but you get used to it after a while. But literally, it, it, it was more space than the rest of the folks because right. it had a little conference area, but there were no walls. It was Talk the, about the transparency. person right in the middle <laughs> uh, uh, of the space uh, taking phone calls and doing work. Yeah. Talk about transparency, huh? Yes. Yes. 
Well, you've also obviously had a lot of success, and we appreciate your time going through those three bullets. And again, that's a, a tr be an attractor, embrace the crookedness, and live to learn. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about, I mean, are these your largest key takeaways from, from life and business that you formulated into books? And if not, you know, what are those kind of lessons learned, so to speak? Oh, I'd love to do that. I, I'm not going to take you through the three by three matrix on these, yeah. but I'm going to tell you the point on both of these that drove me to do the book. Yeah. The first one uh, I wrote, Get Real Leadership, um, in 2012, it was, was a direct result of my time being around Sam Walton. I was on a special assignment with P&G yeah. in Northwest I Arkansas. I was talking about the story. And, and uh, he, he was a, uh, an amazing man, yeah. wildly successful, of course, but just an amazing man. And um, he's the one that taught me about things like servant leadership. Mm. He was a big proponent of that. He was a big proponent of MBWA, which I'd never heard of, management by walking around. Oh, yeah. Um, and and uh, the, these things, and, and I thought about it, and, and I boiled it down to one thing with regard to um, uh, a success, his success criteria. He treats people extraordinarily well. Mm. He has very high standards with regard to himself and the people around him. He's a, he's a driven man. He was smart. He had all things. But what he did was he treated people so well. So what happens is people wanted to work with him and for him. When he wasn't around, they wanted to excel. They did things um, that, that they even didn't believe that they could uh, um, achieve themselves because they wanted to do it for him. If they knew him as uh, Mr. Sam. Yeah. And I thought, wow, how cool that is. And one of the things I've tried to do is use my personality and approach to life, which was reasonably similar to his, not nearly as successful, but to, to do that. And I would argue that um, uh, that statement on the front of the book, that you can have relationships, respect, and results all together mm. is amazing because there are people that would say you have to be kind of a hard ass. Oh in order to win in business and um, he proved to me by his actions and his results that he didn't yeah so that was this one amazing person to learn from uh, it, it was e extraordinary I love yeah. it uh, this one actually is just as simple and it has to do with um, the idea of um, people I say people hire people people fire people people promote people people leave because of bad people, people go places <laughs> because of good people, people follow, people have expectations of other people. The, the amazing world of business and the ecosystem we exist in is all driven by this. And, and I think it's fascinating to watch how others who are not as successful um, I'll go back to the attractor versus repeller, repel people mm. and, and don't treat them with respect and micromanage them. And then when they're gone on vacation, they expect the uh, everybody to still do the same amount of work. Sure. And it just doesn't work that way. Yeah. And and I, I love this. You were you were talking about um, your picture of the world not being as hierarchical that goes with this picture here oh, yeah. because what happens is everybody's interconnected and you have much more access to competitors, to bosses in your company that are levels ahead. I mean I, I was at Procter and Gamble in marketing from eighty five to ninety two and my director, I rarely saw, mm -hmm. and my vice president, I really didn't see at all. Wow! Because th I was a brand assistant, and there was a, there was a brand manager, and then there was an assistant director and a director, and that everything was done within the confines of the hierarchy, yeah, or, or most things. Right. And it, w it was a great company, but it was. Um, very, very process driven, and many companies aren't that way at all anymore. Right, they're more yeah. like this, where everybody has a chance to interact with the boss one on one. Um, the one thing that that's fascinating is that I love about that kind of business is um, there's nothing more humbling than having your direct reports have complete access to your boss. Yeah. Because it used to be the message was controlled. Oh, yeah. And if you didn't like your boss, you weren't going to get a chance to talk to your boss's boss to tell him that. Right. But now it's all open, and I, I think that's very healthy. Yeah. I think it, it makes people operate in a way that's more um, open and transparent and vulnerable. Yeah, without a doubt. Everything ties together. So uh, if you haven't checked out his books, be sure to. Where can, where can people find that? Amazon? Or? Um, yes, they can. Uh, uh, both these books and within... Actually, all three of the books are now available yeah. since this is um, uh, being recorded um, on Amazon, and they're also available via Kindle. Okay. I have decided, this is going to hold me responsible for this, I'm going <laughs> to read these books and make them into audios. After I get the third one done, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Uh, my books are not fancy. 
They're simple, they're practical, and they provide uh, steps that uh, you can take in order to be more effective. I double spaced them to get them to 100 pages. All right. So it's that's, about an that's hour. That's my kind of book. I, I call them one, <laughs> one, one airplane ride, like right. an hour and 15 minutes, and you got it. Yeah, that's awesome. There's thing. nothing fancy about them. Uh, that's a that's the way business books should be, or books in general. Um, <laughs> Amen. And you give uh, speak or speeches on each one of these books too, I correct? Do. Yeah. I do. I have a keynote speech on. Uh, it's about a 45 minute keynote speech, which is really. Um, the summary of a lot of the things that I've just talked about today are captured in there, and I'm a storyteller. 45-minute keynote on leadership, on culture, and then also on mindset. That's great. And I'm fired up to get the third one because I've, I've done this a lot. I've done over 100 on leadership and probably 40 or 50 on culture, and it's n nice to have a third. Yeah, uh, something new uh, and fresh. Subject. Exactly. It yeah. keeps me uh, re-engaged or, or it re-engages me and keeps me very interested. Yeah, that's exciting. Well, for the listeners and viewers out there, if you're looking for a good read, be sure to check out Harry Campbell's books or uh, look them up for your next event if you need a, a keynote speaker. Uh, where can people find you if, if they want to contact you? I've got a speaking website. Uh, it's my name, www.harrysamcampbell.com. Okay. I've got uh, some references and I've got some video out there and uh, um, uh, summaries of some of my uh, books and there's also a link to Amazon to be able to buy a book but harryscampbell.com and um, there's even a book Harry now and it ends up sending a message to me because I am a staff of one all right <laughs> awesome Harry thanks so much for your time really appreciate the uh, knowledge you've given us today oh, you're welcome thank you thank you that wraps up today's episode we hope to have brought you some valuable key takeaways most importantly Whatever you learned, take action on it. Apply it to your life. Apply it to your career. Motivation and inspiration only come as a result of taking that first step. So if you're enjoying the podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe on whichever platform you found the show. You can also follow us on all the major social media platforms or contact us directly at genyleaders at gmail.com. That's G-E-N-W-H-Y leaders at gmail.com. Until next time, I'm Eric Huey, and thanks for listening to the Gen Y Leaders Podcast.